Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you all this morning. I'm the Reverend William Levwood. My pronouns are he, him. Many of you uh, refer to me as Rev Lev, which I love. Uh, did I say that I'm the minister here at Acting Unitarian Universalist Church? That's, that's who I am and, and why I'm up here before you. If you haven't noticed already, particularly for those of you who are in our sanctuary in person, things are set up a little bit differently. We do things differently when we do multi-generational services, but today in particular, we're gonna be making some stuff together. And so we've grouped you into these small little uh, semi-circle groups for that reason. So that's why the chairs are set up the way they are. I'm super excited to share our service this morning with you. So without further ado, let's center ourselves for worship by taking a nice deep breath together. We open and welcome to the ancestral people of this land, acknowledging that our church, like all of Burke, rests on the unceded territory of the Manahoac tribe of the Great Sioux Nation. We seek healing and the realization of justice with the people of this land who live on in their descendants, the present day members of the Monacan Indian Nation, the Patawomic Indian Tribe of Virginia, and the Piscataway Indian Nation. We honor the ancestors as we move toward healing so that all together shall one day know full justice. Welcome to Akatank Unitarian Universalist Church. I am Nancy Melito. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm happy to be your worship associate today. This congregation is a welcoming and inclusive spiritual home where we inspire each other to live our values. Together we care in community, grow in spirit, and act for justice. Whether you're a longtime member or a newcomer or something in between, we're so delighted to join us today. Welcome. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So, this month our theme is justice and equity. Last Sunday, we looked at how to dismantle all kinds of systemic oppressions. We looked at the book Cast from Isabel Wilkerson and the idea that caste is the, the foundational thing that we want to dismantle in this country and in other places around the world. And that the kind of foundation of caste is this idea that some people or groups of people are inherently superior and some people or groups of people are inherently inferior. And when we have that, then we have the idea that difference denotes your place in the hierarchy right, that our differences show where we fall in the hierarchy. So in contrast to that, drawing on the wisdom of black feminist, lesbian, uh, black lesbian feminist Audre Lorde, we talked about celebrating differences as a, a place of creative tension and, and that sparks us to new growth and learning together and joy, right? So that's a way to dismantle, is to begin to say that differences are something to be celebrated. So this week, we're gonna continue with this idea of building accessible and, and, and inclusive communities, building the beloved community that we dream about. And you're actually not gonna get a lot of words about that from the pulpit. We're actually going to practice doing that together. We're gonna come up with a vision or multiple visions for what that world might, might be like. And then here's the challenging part and the really fun part. And the reason that your greet your neighbor question was about collaboration. Then we're gonna, in these groups that you're kind of grouped in, we're gonna make vision boards 
of together, collaboratively, of this new world that we hope to bring into being. Okay? Then next Sunday, we're going to have practical examples, stories from members of this congregation talking about how they made good trouble in the world and, and how that brought change in their own lives or change in the world. Okay? Using that term from John Lewis, may his memory be for a blessing. And then the final Sunday of this month, where we're exploring justice and equity, we're going to, I think we're going to experience it today, but we're going to look at how we're called to be beloved community. So not while we're dismantling and building, we are already embodying this kind of community that we want to live in, this kind of world that we want to live in. And that can be a joy and a place of sustenance. So we don't have to wait until we've made a utopian world to enjoy the fruits of our labors, but the very process of doing it, which again, I hope you'll see today in the process of collaboration today, can be itself beloved community. So I wanna share some wisdom with you briefly from uh, the book, Everyday Utopias, where uh, author and historian Kristen Godsey looks at 2,000 years of utopian experiments, communal experiences in how to live differently in our everyday lives. And she shares that these utopian experiments open our minds to new ways the world can be. And in, in some circles, this is called blue sky thinking. In fact, often in the business world, uh, people will engage in blue sky thinking to spark innovation. So, so she says, why not bring that blue sky thinking into how we think about making our world together, how we think about interacting with each other. So blue sky thinking encourages you to come up with the most outlandish ideas that you could possibly think of, calls you to silence that inner critic that says to yourself or to someone else, well, that's ridiculous. That could never happen. And instead, to allow yourself to really vision new ideas and new ways of being. Chris and Godsey points, points out that this is just the first step of the process. It may be true that we can't make that outlandish beautiful vision true here today or even tomorrow. But that if we quiet our critical mind, that's going to spark new visions. And then from that outlandish idea, we can take and find a vision that we can actually put into practice today and make a strategy for those more challenging visions that we might experience in the future, whether that future is five years, 10 years, or a couple generations from now. So we're going to do some blue sky thinking right now. I want to invite you to reflect. You can even write down some thoughts. I want you to reflect on an ideal vision for the future and encourage you to focus in one of three categories. So your vision can focus on how every person can flourish with dignity. That's from our new value of equity, how every person can flourish with dignity. Your vision can't, could focus on how to have a really diverse community or how to have small communities full of multicultural diversity and all kinds of diversity, truly accessible and inclusive communities. It could focus on what I'm calling an earthwide ecological utopia. So a global vision of the world of justice and peace and liberty and a world where the earth is thriving and cared for. Or you also can just mix all three of those together. Okay, so we're going to take just a couple minutes for you to reflect either just in your mind or to write down some notes. What would that vision of the future look like? If you could just open your blue sky thinking to, to the unimaginable and imagine that coming into being, what would that look like? Good morning. Good morning.
The Boxa Text by Kim Smith. Meg was a boxa tect. She loved to make things out of boxes. She loved making tiny houses, tall towers, and twisty tunnels. And she made marvelous things no one had ever seen before. Meg was proud of her work. She could make boxes into anything. Meg's mother was proud too. She thought Meg was brilliant and creative. So Meg's mother sent Meg to maker school. At maker school, there were blanketeers, spaghetti techs, tin foilers, and egg cartoniers. There was also, there was almost any kind of make you could imagine. But Meg was the class's first box detect, and that made her feel special. At school, Meg learned all about box architecture. She learned how to make her structures useful, strong, and beautiful. Meg loved everything about maker school until Simone was new. She was also brilliant and creative. Worst of all, Simone was a box attack too. And she was already making things Meg had never dreamed of. In class, Simone would point out ways Meg could make her constructions a little straighter, more wind resistant, and less boring. So Meg told Simone she should build things that were less bumpy sturdier and much prettier. On the last day of school, the class's annual maker match was held to see who could make the most amazing thing. There was just one rule. You had to work as a team. But Meg didn't want to work with anyone, and neither did Simone. The blanketeers built with blankets and pillows. The bakeologists built with cake and frosting, but the box attacks were not building at all. They were arguing. I want to make a tree house, Meg said. No, I want to make a ship, Simone insisted. Meg drew a line down the middle of a very large box. I'll take this half, you can have the other. Fine, said Simone. Soon, Meg noticed that her treehouse wasn't as large as Simone's ship. So she made her side taller and more impressive. When Simone noticed that Meg's treehouse was taller than her ship, she made her side higher and more extraordinary. Slowly, Meg and Simone's creation grew bigger and bigger. They both built and built until there wasn't a single box left. And at last, they finished. What is it? asked a classmate. I've never seen anything like it, said another. The teacher said, it looks like it might. Achoo! Crash! Your slide was too wobbly, shouted Meg. Your side was too heavy, cried Simone. Oh! Dear, said the judge. The maker match was not over yet, but most of Meg and Simone's work was ruined. There were only a few parts left that could be saved. If we combine my treehouse with your ship, Meg started, we might be able to make one thing, fin finish Simone. The box attacks decided to call a truce so they could finish the match. Working as a team, Meg and Simone quickly joined the remaining pieces together until they had created something new. At the end of the maker match, the box attacks hadn't won first place, but they had a different way of making brilliant and creative things working together. And they each gained a new friend what should we make next? How about a 
buoyant bungalow, or a motorcycle mansion. All right. So we're going to make our own maker school right here today together. We're calling all boxy techs, spaghetti techs, bakeologists, and blanketeers. Actually, we're not going to make anything with spaghetti pasta today, or, or even with boxes. We are, however, going to be makers together, change makers even. How are we going to do that, Ashley? So. Oh, we're going to be creative. Um, many of you know about vision boarding, right? Have we all heard about vision boarding? So we are wanting to build a vision board together in groups of three to five, and we want multi-generational groups. So there's tables around the room. We've got one here, one in the back one off to this side, and one in the front. So they have supplies. They have half-size poster boards, one per group. We have images of every kind, scissors, markers, colored pencils, and glue sticks. You can be as creative as you want to be. That's the fun in this. You're going to create together. So. Uh, you're probably already in groups, and I saw some of you were already reflecting together. Look around and make sure that every group has at least three people. And if there is a family group, it's fine to stay together, but let's see if we can get one other person to join any, any groups that are just families. So like over here, we could use one more person, and, and right there, we could use one more person. I think that's it. All right, or, or three to five. Okay, so before we get started, before we get started, a couple of tips for collaboration, okay? Uh, you learned a little bit from Simone and Meg about what not to do when you're collaborating. But here's some tips for collaboration to help you out. Start with a vision, but hold it softly so that it can change as it grows. When I was a dance maker, I noticed that sometimes I would have a vision for a dance, and if I held too strongly to that vision, I would end up with a great description, a description that was better than the actual piece that I made. In, whereas if I had a soft vision and then I used the materials at hand and made what actually could be made, it ended up with a better product. So hold your vision softly as you work with others. Remember that every idea has a seed of a good idea within it. This comes from the performance group, the collaborative performance group, Goat Island. So if somebody comes up with an idea and you're like, I hate that idea. I don't want to put that in my vision board. Then your job is to ask them, what is, what is it about that idea that's so important to you? And ask yourself, what is it about that idea that I don't like? They give the example of starting a piece with a video of a red bird flying across a desolate landscape. Do I, want, do I not want video? Do I want the bird to be blue? Do I want the, it to happen in a, a, a abundant forest instead of a desolate landscape? What about that idea don't I like? And what about it is there a seed that I agree with and can work with, okay? And then the next two are kind of a, a similar. Make space for everyone. So make sure in your group that everybody's voice is being included, everybody's participation is being included, especially children. We need you to, to, to take up some space, to show up and, and give us your input. And, and then whoever is taking up a lot of space to, to step back and make space for others as well, okay? And then last, the focus of this is not the product. So yeah, we're making vision boards together, but the process is the point. Today and every day after today, we're gonna have to build a new way together. We're gonna have to make the world that we dream of together. And whenever we leave somebody out, leave somebody behind in the process, they're gonna show up to thwart that vision somewhere along the road. So you really wanna make it about the process and invite everyone into the process. 
Now, if you're online, it's a little bit more challenging. You don't have the materials that we set out for you. Uh, but we're inviting you to share written ideas. Images, if you can figure out, you can write down an image or, uh, and put it in the chat. Or if you uh, know how to find an image and link it in the chat, more power to you. Um, oh, 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 oh. And for all the groups, we want you to choose one of these visions. So this is the tricky first part. You made a vision of every person flourishing with dignity or of diverse community or of an ecological global utopia or you mix it together. So your first thing is to get together and decide, are you going to mix it all together? Or are you going to focus on one or the other? As a group, you need to decide that first. OK, and if you're online, you don't have to decide that. You can just throw in your ideas into the chat on any of those. OK, again, if you're online, you can share an experience of flourishing. You can share an experience of being part of a diverse community or for caring for the earth with others. And this is about collaboration for everybody. So if you're online, see if you can build in the chat on what others share. Can you take the words of another and expand on it? Another way to think about this for all of us is the game yes and. So if someone in the chat puts that they want a vision of the future where there's no need for money, and you think that is not a good idea, you should say yes, in the future there isn't any need for money, and when people barter they sometimes share tokens. So they remember when they owe someone else and want to pay them back in the future. You see, you see what I did there? <laughs> yes, no money, and this kind of money-like thing, right, that we put in the mix, okay? I'm going to leave you with some homework, okay? Your homework is to imagine, first, if you are already living in the world that your vision board describes, that it illustrates, how would you live differently right now if you were already living in that world? That's the first part. And the second part is how can you bring some of that into your life right now? Okay, so we mentioned that this blue sky thinking opens up new doorways. And then the next step is how do we start to actualize some of that in our lives and in the life of our society? We'll talk later in the year about how you make strategy to get from the vision to the world that we want to have. But for now, your homework isn't to do that. Your homework is just, what, how would I live differently if I was in this beautiful vision that I created with others? And how can I bring just a small part of that into my life, right? Maybe it's a half hour meditation time or, or, a, or a volunteering project. You know, I know we got a lot of that already in this congregation. Maybe it's making phone calls reaching out more to people to have more connection in your life and more community. Whatever it is, how would you live differently and what would that look like? Please rise now in body or in spirit. Extend your hands out to each other. If you're at home, extend your hands out to your computer screen. And join in our closing words by David Bumbach. This church is dedicated to the proposition that behind all our differences and beneath all our diversity, there is a unity that makes us one and binds us forever together in spite of time, death, and the space between the stars. We pause now in silent witness to that unity. And as I look around and see the magic and the spark in everyone's eyes, it makes me so happy to be here today. Now that we have gathered together in this welcoming and inclusive spiritual home, let us go out into the world nourished, rejuvenated, and inspired to share our values.